so now we are going to work with the situation where the data is paired or you can say that they are dependent in that case we, we can denote the difference of the two means mu1 minus mu2 as mu d right then you would say that the difference of the two means is greater than d naught okay that is the specified value or you can say hypothesized difference of means so here in the right tail test it would be that the difference of the two population means is greater than some quantity if it is zero it would mean that mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero or you could say mu1 is greater than mu2 right so mu1 minus mu2 is mu d okay we are using this notation mu suffix d because we are dealing with paired data and if you can recall we take the differences of the two set of observations and we denote it by di's and then we take sample mean so we denote it by d bar so in order to just be in sync with what you are going to use notations so that you are going to use in these few lectures that is why i have kept it mu d if you want to keep it mu1 minus mu2 that is also fine so obviously the test statistic in this case would be d bar minus d naught over sd by root n right this we know from your let me just show you this is coming from theorem 6 in week 5 okay so there also if you can recall we have d bar so d bar is 1 over n summation di's right and what are di's 1 over n summation di's are difference between xi and yi so you will first take the difference and sum it over the n possible values and then you will take divide by n so you will get the average and d naught is basically you are taking the difference of the two population means right mu1 minus mu2 under the null hypothesis and you divide by this standard error and you get your test statistic so in this case you would be rejecting the null hypothesis if the test statistic that you have obtained is greater than t alpha that is the critical value okay likewise you will have the left tail test where the difference of the two means would be less than d naught in the alternative hypothesis okay this would be your test statistic again same statistic uh, test statistic and the rejection region would change because now you would be working with the lower tail of observations and you can look for this you can look the same theorem that i just referred in the previous slide okay likewise the two tail would be there that the difference of the two population means is not equal to d naught in this case you will get d bar minus d naught over s d by root n so it is same way if you can recall we have the um, x bar minus mu naught s by root n right we had this for a single sample problem so what we do is we have paired data we try to make it independent by taking the difference of their corresponding observations so what you get is your d bar so it is you can consider that because this one is also for single sample only right so same way instead of x bar you are replacing that with d bar instead of mu naught here we are using this difference s is replaced by the corresponding sample standard deviation and you are dividing by the root n and we would reject it if it falls in the rejection region if t star if the test statistic is less than minus t alpha by 2 or if it is greater than t alpha by 2 you would be rejecting at those places to understand this let us consider this example a study was initiated to determine the effectiveness of new exercise program designed for a group of 10 office workers the program aimed to analyze its effect on reducing stress levels with stress measured using a standardized scale before and after the program the hypothesis is that the new exercise regimen leads to a decrease in average stress levels so here you can see that then here one thing is that it is paired right because you are looking at 10 office workers and you are observing certain values on them before you are giving them this new exercise program before they initiate that program and after that so the observations would be dependent 
and the observed data that you have obtained before and after completing the exercise is given to you for the 10 participants. You have to assess this data in order to claim, to test the claim that the exercise program reduces the stress level of an office worker at level of significance 0.05. So, how can we solve this? We immediately know that it, we are talking about paired data set. So, the previous two results or that we studied, all right, that will not be applicable in this situation. Here, we will be considering this as your xi's, these are your yi's, we can calculate di's, right. Once you have di's, you will calculate your d bar, you can calculate the standard deviation also and substitute in the formula. So, let us see what is the question. So, hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, it is a right tail test because you want to see that after the regimen, new exercise regimen is actually good, right. So, it means that after stress levels, this one. So, let me just show you. Test the claim that the exercise program reduces the average stress level of an office worker, right. So, if you look at the average stress level, if you are denoting the for the first one, if you are denoting by mu1, after it is mu2, it means the average stress level earlier was more than the second one, right, if you want to claim, uh, prove this one, right. So, that is why we write that difference mu d, that would be your alternative and this is going to be your test statistic because here d naught is 0 and you are going to reject the null at 9 degrees of freedom because it is n minus 1. Okay. So, you will calculate these d i's for each of each pair of observations. You can get this too and substituting this value in the test statistic, we have that it is approximately 12.829. Okay. And the critical value that you get at degrees of freedom 9 is 1.833, it means that your test statistic that you have calculated is greater than your critical value, so you are going to reject it, okay, because T star is greater than or equal to T alpha, okay. So, under this situation, we reject the null hypothesis and we are going to accept the alternative that yes, you have significant statistical evidence to conclude that the exercise program effectively reduces stress levels among office workers. Okay, so this shows that it is the program is good. So these three were your test for difference of the two means. Next, we move on to the test for the two variances. We know that we deal with the ratio of those variances. And if they we are having two variances, ratio of two variance, first is that when we are dealing with variance, we come across chi-square distribution and when we have two such variances, we will come across f distribution, okay, because ratio of two chi-squares divided by their respective degrees of freedom gives you the f distribution, okay, and its degrees of freedom are also aligned in that way, right. So, the first one is your one tail test or you can say it is your right tail test. So, in right tail test, you will have this one. So, here we are basically considering that the d naught or the um, sigma 1 over sigma 2 that is basically 1 over here, right. So, sigma 1 square over sigma 2 square, this is greater than equal to some value, right. So, maybe sigma naught square I can write and that is 1 given to you. So, here what we will use? The test statistic would be the ratio of the two sample variances. Again, we have seen this result also initially when we studied week 5 and in this case, we would be working with 2 degrees of freedom and you would be rejecting the null hypothesis if it if, if this value that is a test statistic is greater than this or if you use this asterisk over here, then you can easily see that f star is greater than or equal to the critical value that we have. 
Okay, so in that case, you would reject the null hypothesis. Same way, case two would be your left tail test. So in left tail, it would be the alternative would be defined in this way, and the test statistic would be the ratio of the two sample variances. Again, same thing, and you would be rejecting the null hypothesis if your f statistic that you have obtained is less than f of 1 minus alpha. So, it is calculated at 1 minus alpha, right. So, it is something like this. So, here in the previous one you would have f alpha over here and if you are considering this situation, so it is somewhere here f 1 minus alpha. So, this is your alpha and this is 1 minus alpha. Okay. So, you are going to reject the null hypothesis if it is falling in this region. Likewise, you will have the two tail test. Here we assume we want in the null hypothesis, the claim is that the two variances are same and in the alternative it is that they are different. Right? Considering this test statistic, we know that we are going to reject the null hypothesis if it is falling in this region. So, this is basically f star, right. We know that f is skewed, right. So, this is your f of 1 minus alpha by 2 and this is f of alpha by 2. So, area over here is alpha by 2. Again, area to this side would be alpha by 2 and here we will have 1 minus alpha in between. Okay. So, for the upper tail you will have f alpha by 2 degrees, the 2 degrees of freedom will also be there. So, if it is falling in this region or if it is falling in this region, then it would be the test statistic if it is less than 1 minus alpha by 2. Okay. So, in this way you can conduct the test for the two variances. So, to understand this, let us consider an example. Consider a scenario where a utility provider operates two facilities designated as facility A and B which process water for distribution. The management wishes to determine whether there is a discrepancy in the consistency of the water's pH levels between the two facilities which could arise from variations in the equipment used at each site. So, the question itself says that you are interested to determine whether there is a discrepancy in the consistency of the water's pH level. So, consistency means that we are talking about variability. Less consistency means that more variability. Okay. So, to investigate this, samples of water from 10 different containers are collected from each facility and these are the pH levels that they obtain. You have to determine whether the variances in pH levels at facility A and facility B differ significantly. Okay. The two are different. So, it would be your two tail test. Okay. The test statistic would be simply you can substitute the sample variances because you have the data set you will calculate your x bar right x1 bar and x2 bar you can get and likewise you can get s1 square and s2 square also. Okay. So, you will substitute it over here what you get is it is approximately 1.23. So, if you look at the critical values also from the table or you use the software, you can easily get it that this value because this is what? This is alpha by 2 and this one is 1 minus alpha by 2. So, this alpha is 0 0.05, right. So, it, alpha by 2 would be 0 0.025 and 1 minus alpha by 2 would be 0 0.975 and since the total number of observations is 9 in both the cases, so degree of freedom would be n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 that is 9 in each case. So, you can see that 1 minus 2 uh, sorry this test statistic that you have calculated over here right it does not fall in the rejection region right because we want to see we are going to reject if your test statistic would have been less than 0 0.2484 or if it was greater than 4.026. So, you have what you have is 1.23. So, it is not going to fall in the critical region. 
so you fail to reject the null hypothesis. It means that from both the facilities, the pH values are or consistent, right? They are coming out as same. Okay. Next, we have the test for the two proportions. Again, we know that in case of two proportions, binomial and your normal approximation would come. So, in right tail test, what it will be that the difference of the two proportions is greater than the hypothesized value, right? The test statistic would be this because P1 hat minus P2 hat minus P0. P0 is basically under the null hypothesis because it is P1 minus P2 only, but under the null hypothesis, P1 minus P2 is P0 under H0. So, that is why we write it. And we know that this in the denominator you have your standard error. So, we have seen this test statistic earlier also in week 5. So, for level alpha, you reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic that you have obtained is greater than or equal to the critical value. So, you have to look at the 8th theorem in week 5. Okay. So, if it is like this. So, you if reject the null hypothesis if it is falling in this portion. Left tail test would come how? Obviously, here it would be, sorry, this one would be greater than or equal to P0 and this side it would be less than P0 because it is a left tail test. The test statistic would remain the same. Rejection region would change because now we would be looking at the lower tail. So, you have to check the condition that your test statistic is less than your critical value or not. All right. So, these are easy steps and most of obviously the results in your proportion when you are dealing with a single proportion or the difference of the two proportions, it is in sync with what you have obtained for the means because difference of means. Because in difference of means, you have your uh, this one normal distribution, right? So, in this case also, you will get normal distribution. And obviously, when sigma is unknown, then you will have t distribution in case of for means. Otherwise, if it is known, then you would have the normal distribution, standard normal. Likewise, you can have the two tail test also. Difference of the two proportions is not same as p naught. That is the specified value. We can take it as 0 also. Test statistic would remain same and you would reject the null hypothesis if this happens, right? If it is minus z alpha by 2 this side, it would be z alpha by 2 because it is symmetric. Here it would be alpha by 2 and this is again alpha by 2. So, in between you have 1 minus alpha. So, you will reject the null hypothesis if it falls in this shaded portion. Okay. So, all the tests, they are very simple and they follow the same pattern more or less. You have to first of all identify what is the hypothesis in your given problem and what is the scenario, right? If you identify that it is about the proportion or if it is talking about mean, or if it is even mean, then under what category it is, either is it independent or dependent, right? So, also those things you have to be careful with. So, to understand this, let us consider an example. An epidemiologist is studying the effectiveness of new online health education portal compared to traditional in-person health workshop. So, he is comparing the online health education versus your in-person health workshop. That is the traditional method. From a community of 500 individuals, 200 are randomly selected to receive access to the online health education portal and the remaining 300 individuals participate in regular in-person workshops. Right? After 6 months, all participants complete a health literacy survey and the results are summarized as follows. So, those who pass the survey, it is 160 for online and 210 for in-person. 
and did not pass as 40 and 90 because there were total 200 in this case and there were 300 in the second one. So, you have to determine whether the online health education portal increased the proportion of individuals who passed the literacy survey. Okay, because here if you see in online portal you have 160 and it is 210 although but here in this case not passing is 40 only and in this case you have 90 right so you have to see whether the proportion for online health education increases is more than that from the traditional ones so if you denote p1 as the proportion of individuals who pass the health literacy survey using the online portal and the others use the in person workshops then you have the alternative as that proportion from online is more than that of the traditional one. So, P1 P1 greater than P2. You can calculate P1 hat and P2 hat because P1 hat would be 160 because those who participate, uh, those who passed and 200 is those who participated in the first one, in the online one and P2 is 200. 10 by 300. So, you can see the proportion P1 hat is coming out to more as P2 hat and when we further analyze it, you can find the test statistic, you will substitute the values of P1 hat and P2 hat, N1 and N2, what you get is approximately 2.58. Since your test statistic value that is 2.58 is greater than your critical value that is 1.645. You reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the online health education portal increases the proportion of individuals who pass the health literacy rate. So, P1 is actually greater than P2. Okay. So, obviously the conclusion that you draw at the end is equally important because that is what you are going to interpret. First, you have to analyze and then you have to report these results in the form of these statements that based upon the question or the problem that you are dealing with, you have to conclude in the form of the statements that what is happening over here. So, we have looked at different tests in case of the two sample problems. We have looked at difference of means, then we have looked at the ratio of the variances and then we have finally talked about the difference of the two proportions.